Senator Johnson, uh, you're recognized uh, for your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before I get into my line of questioning for today's subject, uh, Ms. Solis, uh, no, Ms. S M uh, Smizlova, uh, I received, when I'm sitting here in the hearing, a press release from Capitol Police that said that we have obtained intelligence that shows a possible plot to breach the Capitol by an, un by an identified militia group on Thursday, March 4th. Is that uh, a threat that you're aware of? Uh, Senator, we uh, issued a bulletin last night, uh, co-authored with the FBI, about uh, extremists discussing, discussing March 4th and March 6th. Is that, is that what you're referring okay. to? It's a joint yes, intelligence and, uh, bulletin we released last night around, it was very late, midnight, I think. Yes. Okay. Well, again, so th the threats are ongoing. Yes. Sir. Uh, G General Walker, uh, to review the timeline, at uh, 1.49, uh, Chief Sund contacted you. Uh, at 2.15, the Capitol was breached. Uh, I think in your testimony you said you had uh, uh, available 340 D.C. National Guard troops. Is that correct? Well, sir, it was actually half of that. So, so half were on the streets helping the Metropolitan Police Department. The other half would have came in to relieve them. But, uh, but we would have called them in to come in. Okay. So you had 40 in the quick, ref uh, quick reaction force, correct? Yes, sir. So had you been able to, you know, had this all been pre-approved by the Secretary of Defense, and I'm mindful of, of the considerations of having military involved in civil dis disturbances, and I think that's part of the issue, uh, some of the blowback that occurred uh, with, the, with the spring instances. How quickly could have you gotten how many people to the Capitol? 20 minutes. How many people? 150. Okay. I think that's important information to have. Um, I think, quite honestly, what we need to do here is we need to completely reconstruct what happened. And I mean completely re reconstructed. We, we need to obtain eyewitness testimony from different vantage points, from different perspectives, and that's certainly what I've tried to do. Uh, Ms. Sanborn, how many points of confrontation occurred during the riot? I mean, in other, in other words, were these primarily at choke points, doors, windows that were breached, and then inside the Capitol, again, uh, outside the House chamber? Or, or was there a, you know, the, the Capitol is 751 feet long. Was this a 751 long line that's, that uh, Capitol Police and other law enforcement were, were battling uh, protesters? Uh, thank you for the question. I think we're still in the process of gathering that data. Obviously, the folks that we have charged, we've charged for breaching and getting inside. And so we at least know that at some point they got through a choke point. The actual distance of how long that was is still part of what we're examining, sir. Okay, but, but you're, we've got all kinds of video, uh, all kinds of photographs. So you obviously are examining that. And from that video, you've been able to arrest uh, 300 people. 300 people have been charged. 18 have been charged with conspiracy, 40 have been, 40 have been arrested for assault on law enforcement officers. So have you, looking at those videos, maybe not been able to ad identify the people, but have, have you counted the number of people that you want to identify, for example, that, that will probably be charged with assault? So we're still doing that, um, and that number increases just like the arrests every day, and so far we have identified hundreds of people that we're trying to still identify. Okay. Well, Again, we've got 300 individuals have been charged, 40 have been charged by assault. Do you, do you expect the, the hundreds of people to be charged with assault, or will those be disorderly contact, unlawful entry? I mean, what, give, give me some sort of sense yep. of, of the, the extent of this. Absolutely. It's a fair question. So I think the charges have ranged from everything from trespassing to obstruction to definitely assault on federal officers. We have a fair number of those. And so the charges based on the actual behavior that the individual partook that day definitely vary. How many firearms were uh, confiscated uh, in the Capitol or, or on Capitol grounds during that day? To my knowledge, we have not recovered any on that day from any other arrests at the scene at this point. But I don't want to speak on behalf of Metro and Capitol Police, okay. but to my knowledge, none. So no nobody's been charged with an actual firearm weapon in the Capitol or on Capitol grounds? Correct. The closest we came was the vehicle that uh, had the Molotov cocktails in it, and when we did a search of that vehicle later on, there was a weapon, but... How, how many shots were fired that we know of? 
I believe the only shots that were fired were the ones that resulted in the death of the um, one lady. Okay. Well, again, I, I appreciate the, the chair's comments about uh, a bipartisan, nonpartisan uh, investigation here, seeking out the truth. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, cognizant of how it was, I was reacted to by offering an eyewitness account at the last hearing, I'm, I'll risk entering another piece of uh, a reporting into the record. This is from the New York Times. Hopefully that will be viewed more favorably. Uh, the title is, uh, A Small Group of Militants Outsized Role in the Capitol Attack. In that report, uh, it says, Federal prosecutors have said members of the Oath Keepers Militia Group planned and organized their attack and, quote, put into motion the violence that overwhelmed the Capitol. The, the reason I'm entering this in the record and read that quote is that it really does seem to align with the uh, eyewitness account that I uh, read parts, portions of in the record uh, last week. Uh, no conspiracy theory, just an eyewitness account from a, a knowledgeable observer. I didn't get to the point of the actual attack, and I want to just read a couple excerpts. Uh, this is the title, Provocateurs Turn Unsuspecting Marches into an Invading Mob. And again, these provocateurs are primarily white supremacist groups. Then a loud bellowing shout from behind, quote, forward, do not retreat, forward. Then two other men standing across from one another on the high granite curbs on either side of the footpath bellowed variations of forward, do not dare retreat. Some made direct eye contact to people and pointed directly at them as if trying to psych them into submitting. A third man standing on a chair also shouting forward reached, reached down and grabbed me by the shoulder and barked, don't retreat, get back up there. It wasn't an expression of enthusiasm or solidarity. It sounded like a military order. And it wasn't from a, from a wild-eyed kid. This guy was probably in his 50s. He looked furious with me. Nobody, nobody seemed aware the Capitol was physically under attack. The tear gas caused pandemonium. But there was still no stampede, and people helped create or widen paths to allow others to leave the area. Then from the north, a column of uniformed, agile younger men walked briskly, single file toward the inaugural stand. They came from... They came within two feet of me. Their camouflage uniforms were clean, neat, and with a pattern I couldn't identify. These were the disciplined, uniformed column of tactors I had seen. Uh, there were a good three dozen of them moving in a single snake-like formation. They were organized. They were disciplined. They were prepared. We're taking the Capitol, the first or second announced. You're going to get arrested, someone called. Ms. Sanborn, is that kind of, does that tie into with what you're uncovering as you investigate exactly what happened in the camp that day, that you had these armed militia groups that had conspired and organized to be there, maybe dozens, we don't know how many, but that, that they were organized and knew how to use the mob to storm the Capitol. Is that kind of what you're seeing? We definitely so far are seeing a mixture of that, absolutely. We're seeing people that got caught up in the moment, got caught up in the you know, sort of the energy, et cetera. Um, and made their way into the Capitol, and those are probably the ones that you're seeing the charges simply of trespassing. And then we're definitely seeing that portion that you're pointing out, which is small groups and cells now being charged with conspiracy that coalesced either on site or even days or weeks prior and had sort of an intent that day, and they too probably caught people up in the energy. So just one final comment. I, I would urge anybody that criticized me for entering an eyewitness account of the record last week to please read the eyewitness account to take a look at actually what the truth is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I call on Senator Merkley, I just want to ask you, Ms. Samber, one thing. Uh, these people uh, that were um, assaulting the Capitol um, uh, in military gear and were pinning uh, an officer between a door uh, and were um, using bear spray on officers in the Capitol, would you title them provocateurs? Ma'am, it would all depend on the evidence behind the case, right? So as we're going through and we're figuring out what actually we know about each individual, it would just depend on what the facts and what we know holistically about that to be able to put a label on it. Do you think there were some very serious, violent people involved in this insurrection? 100 percent. A lot of officers were injured and a lot of damage was done. And would you describe the atmosphere as festive? Absolutely not. Thank you.